Woo! Nice, bright, and early morning. It's probably about like seven, I guess it's like 7.30 maybe now. It takes me a little while to get this thing set up. It's one of the drawbacks, but um, you know, once you get out of here, obviously right now it's really nice. I can set everything up, don't need to worry about pedaling. Just change this a little bit, change the direction. Um, but anyways, we're out here bright and early. It is, today is April 1st, which is the opening day of rockfish season in the Bay Area. So depending on where you are in California, the opening day is different days. Um, Southern California opens a little bit sooner. Northern California opens a little bit later. I think it's because the um, mating season or breeding season or whatever for lingcod and rockfish, um, I think that de is determined by the water temperature. And because the water temperature is a little bit warmer, in Southern California, they breed a little bit earlier, um, and obviously the same, or the, the whatever, the opposite up north, uh, because the water temperature is a little bit colder up there, they breed a little bit later in the season. I think that's why, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, so today's opening day rockfish, first day, first crack at it, I'm gonna try and get some link cod. But first, I actually brought some crab traps. My my kayak here is pretty, pretty full. I got crab buoys, I got crab pots in the back, got all my bait in the back. Um, so we're gonna test the, the capacity of this kayak, I guess. I, I, just, I guess there's probably like, let's see, like if you don't count the motor and the battery, like additional gear, probably close to 100 pounds. Somewhere around there. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Each trap is probably around 10 to 15 pounds with the bait. And then the crab buoys, yeah, maybe not quite 100 pounds. But anyways, we got a lot of gear on here. It's just taking up a lot of space. Like if you saw up front, there's like hardly any room for my feet even. This is my first official time on the uh, open ocean. I did actually take it out one time, but didn't make it to a video because I didn't catch anything. Um, so a fish, first official uh, open ocean mission for the uh, Old Town Sportsman Autopilot. All right. Uh, it's nice to have all this deck space here. All right, so last night I actually pre-rigged all my bait cages here. Um, if you've ever done this in the morning, sometimes it'd be a huge pain, especially when everything's frozen, to try and fit it all into these cages. So I did it the night before. That really helps, makes it easier in the morning. So now I just gotta strap this on. I like using the bait cages as opposed to the bait bags but different people like different stuff, both work. Um, so anyways, I just strap it in there like that. And then I gotta put a buoy on top. Oh, do not fall over. Last one. Boom. All right, that's good to go. Man, that made it a lot easier. Just drop that down. So I'm using lead core rope, which is much better than the uh, uh, cheap, much cheaper rope, the rope that floats. And the reason for that is when it's down there, I mean, I have some excess rope. Oh, it's already hit the bottom. All the excess rope. Sorry, one second. I like to feel the bottom here. Make sure it's feeling kind of sandy. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I think also when I like bring it up and down, it like shakes the bait around a little bit. So I, I don't know, maybe it's just a mental thing, but I feel like that gets some sense going, get those crabs excited. Um, but anyways, what I was saying is I like to use lead core rope. It's not required in California. Some states it is, um, but it's a lot better for other kayakers, other boaters because this rope will sink below the surface. Um, the cheaper like floating rope, like the yellow rope, um, it, it floats on the surface of the water. Um, so boats coming by or other kayaks coming by, they might not see it. And actually this morning, I almost ran over another one that had some uh, floating rope. Um, so, I mean, it's not like I didn't break the, you won't break the um, rope with a, with a regular kayak or like this motor like this, but it's just a big pain. So anyway, it's nice to use lead core rope if you, you know, if you have a choice. So anyways, there's number one, mark it. 
Button number 96. All right, one down, two to go. So for bait today, I got a big mix of just everything I had left in the freezer. Um, just some old carcasses. I think I have some turkey in here from like Thanksgiving. Um, what else do I have? Oh, I threw in, uh, I threw in one herring in each uh, bait bait uh, cage, I'm thinking that the herring probably won't last very long, um, but it'll be a good initial uh, scent disperser to get the crabs going. Hopefully, bring them into the cage early and often. All right, here goes number two. All right, number two, down, one more to go. This was a whole lot easier when getting the bait in earlier. Usually this takes me a little while, but today it was pretty quick. I didn't time myself, but I think it only took me about maybe half an hour tops to drop all three pots. Each buoy is tied to the lead core rope right here. And then that lead core rope is tied to a little harness. Um, I like to use the harness uh, some people don't feel like to tie it to one side of the um, crab pot, but I like to use the harness because that way when I'm dropping it down, I know for sure it's dropping straight down. It lands flat on the ocean, ocean floor. If I ever feel it like it, if I feel like it's hitting a rock or something, I'll definitely move it because, um, you know, rocks... Not only will they, you know, you're tempted or you're liable to get snagged up on a rock and lose your, your pot, um, but rocks are what keep the rock crabs. That's where they uh, like to hang out. And I'm trying to avoid rock crabs if I can. Um, if I get them on accident, then yes, I will keep them because they are also tasty, but um, it's definitely uh, more worth your while, in my opinion, for a dungy. This is the rock crabs, maybe they taste a little bit better, but the dungeness for the work that you put in, like work to meet, work to payout ratio, uh, the dungeness are way better. Third and final pot, going in. All right, those are all set. Hopefully they get me some crab. Now we're gonna head out to the fishing ground. So my plan for lingcod is first, I got on a sabiki here. I'm gonna try and go out and catch some live bait. I don't know what kind of live bait, whatever I can find, smelt, kingfish, whatever. I don't know what else, sand dab. Whatever I can get, anything that swims and that's alive, I'm gonna put it on. Um, and then if I can't find any of those, I'll probably chop this down to two hooks and try and get some smaller rockfish to use that as bait. But um, yeah, that's the plan for now. I'm not seeing much on the finder yet, but um, yeah, I'm still looking, so we'll see if we can find something here. All right, guys, a little update. Tried for live bait for a little bit, didn't get any, but then when I was out there, I realized, forgot the dang crab gauge, which is critical for crabbing. So I'm gonna head back in and get that. Uh, hopefully the battery doesn't die. We're gonna test uh, capacity now. We'll see, I've probably gone like a mile that way, maybe a mile out and then a mile back. So maybe like three miles so far. Back out another mile. You know, we'll probably do close to 10 miles today. We'll see if the battery can handle it. I think it can, but uh, we're gonna see. So anyways, let's go back and get the crab gauge. So dumb, should have forgot that. But anyways, we'll go get it, get back out there. Hopefully it's not too late for some link cod. All right, got the crab gauge. I actually got two just in case. But uh, when I was coming back, I just kind of like put my kayak up on the sand. I didn't do it too well. And it's, <laughs> was coming back from the car. It was floating away. Luckily, it's a really gradual, um, whatever slope here. So I was able to wade out and get it, but it's kind of up to like almost my waist in the water. But uh, whew, this is a nice little jog. All right, let's go get some fish and then some crab. Come on, we gotta get them. All right, guys, well, the uh, smelt, kingfish, all that stuff didn't work out, so I'm gonna try to get some little rockfish here. So I got a little, it's basically, it's my sabiki. I just cut off four of the hooks, so I only have two left. Um, the reason I do that is because for rockfish, you can only use two hooks. 
um, per line, per rod. One rod, two hooks. Um, so a full sabiki with six hooks on it wouldn't be legal, but two hooks sabiki, perfectly legal. Um, we're gonna, we're right over the little reef here. Just dropping my uh, sabiki down to the bottom. I'm trying to look at my fish finder as well so I can make sure I'm on the, on the reef. And uh, it shouldn't take long once you're there. Oh, missed one. There we go. There's one. Smaller one, but this is ideal. All right. Okay, there we go. Oh, quick release. Here, let me show you what we're using here. There we go. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, that was close. Almost lost him. All right, that's a little black rockfish. Um, so these are legal to use as bait, but you have to remember each one you use as bait counts towards your limit, your legal limit. So you're only allowed to use 10 per day. So you gotta make them count. And oh, here, let me get this in the bucket here. Keep them alive. Um, and if, you, uh, if I wanted to keep any rockfish, I can only keep however many left I have. So I'm gonna probably get like four or five, six. I don't plan on keeping any rockfish anyways, but uh, hopefully get like four or five and then we'll start trying for halibut here. Did I say halibut? I meant trolling for lingcod. We're gonna try drifting for, not even trolling, drifting. We're gonna try drifting for lingcod. All right guys, it's go time. No more catching bait. I, got, I only got three, but uh, if I need to stop and get a few more, I can do that. Put this away. So over here. I got my ling cod set up, ready to go here. All right, you can see it there. Just one of my, I got the medium one on here. I'm gonna start with the medium one. I got one that's like a bite-sized one, and then I got one that's a little bigger that um, we'll probably use that one last, see if we can get a big, big one. But anyways, we'll just drop this down. The ling cod will be right in the same little areas that these rockfish are in. Um, so yeah, we're gonna drop it down here. Make sure my drag's good. So, especially with rockfish, you you want to bring your bait up off the bottom. Rockfish are, you know, you don't ever want to drag on the bottom when you're fishing the rocks like this, but rockfish are just really good at getting in those crevices. I'm using them as live bait. So I want to get it a good ways off the bottom. You could bring it even 10 feet off the bottom and those link cod will come up and grab it. Oh, there's a fish. That's a fish. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. 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 Stay on there. I think I need my gaff for this one. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. All right, this is a good one. Thing in order here. Stringer ready. Let me get the bend in that one. Oh, there he goes. Oh my God. Oh yeah, nice ling, nice ling. It's definitely a keeper. Oh, it's actually not that big, but it's a keeper. Get out of there, bait tank. There we go. Found him. And he fell a lot harder than I... I guess it's just been too long since I caught a lingcod. Man, I thought he was a lot bigger than that. 
but that's okay i'll take him first fling cut of the season that's why i use the double hook rig that treble got him all right there's our first keeper ling of the year oh man this guy was a an angry fish man he pulled pretty good i thought he was a lot bigger than this let's see exactly how big he is so minimum size 22 inches all right yeah right at about 24 not huge but that's a solid one so it's been a while since i uh, caught any ling cod on film here even because the season's been closed but um, this blue coloration it looks kind of funny but this is perfectly normal for these fish uh, probably like a little less than half maybe like 30 percent 40 percent have this bluish color um, and i'm not really sure why i mean it's not really like they're bl blending into anything blue down at the bottom of the ocean but um, i don't know for whatever reason they have this blue blue flesh but anyways that's a nice fish you can see he's got those big teeth these are the ones you got to watch out for but um, they're pretty much apex predators in, in these little in these waters these inshore waters pretty much the only thing that'll eat them is themselves i mean uh, every once in a while you'll hook a small ink cod and then an even bigger one will uh, they call it hitchhiking they're basically just holding on to the fish they're not hooked at all um, they'll come up all the way to the surface and then sometimes just let go um, but anyways there's our first one we're hoping to get two so we can get back to the crab pots see what we got in there but uh yeah there's number one all right guys what do you think should we tie on this so i have a little baby one now baby rockfish and i have a pretty big rockfish which one do you guys think i should tie on next you know what? let's put the big one we already got one fish under our belt by the way I have a, an affiliate link for this uh, bait tank right here. Um, the thing I like about this bait tank as compared to the other ones is it it's a little bit more aerodynamic. So um, I can leave it in the water while I'm moving around and it won't drag me down as much as uh, some of the other bait tanks on the market. So anyways, if you're interested, I'll leave that linked in the description. Huh, it's fun to get another one, uh, or so fun to get some fish that'll pull some drag. Been too long in the freshwater. Don't get me wrong, I like freshwater fishing too, but you can't substitute for these saltwater fish. Much stronger, much uh, angrier, and a little bit more fun to catch in my opinion. Is that a bite? Oh yeah, that's a bite, that's a bite. That's a bite. I'll put my lunch down for this one. Oh, did he let it go? I think he let it go. Oh, dang, dropped it. Yep, dropped it. Dang it. Oh, oh, he came up and grabbed it. He came up and grabbed it. Yep. See that? I was reeling my bait up and he came up and grabbed it. These ling cod are so aggressive. All right, I'm just gonna try and hook set him. Yeah, I got him. Oh, that's a big one. That's bigger than the last one. Let's see if I can get him in the net. Oh, it's not that big. He's in the net. He came back for it. Greedy fish. That's why I'm not a huge fan of netting lingcod because they get all wrapped up like this. But 
I had the, the net in hand, so wanted to get him before he went on a run. He never really went on a big run because I didn't let him. Yeah, see, now he's got... Oh, you know what? That's what I thought. He wasn't even hooked. Just hitchhiking. Another nice one, probably about the same size, I'm guessing. Probably like 24, 25 inches. Let's see. Yep. Oh, this one's a little bigger. About 24 and a half. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Some are blue and some are not. This one is not. This is just a normal, you know, white flesh fish. Um, but they're totally the same species. I mean, they interbreed and everything. Um, just some are blue and some are not. So that's a regular blue one, but still got, or sorry, regular colored one, but still got those big teeth. So they'll eat anything they see. I don't know if you could tell by the GoPro footage, but um, this, I'm assuming it's the same fish. This fish hit it, hit my bait when I was drifting on the bottom. And then I was kind of waiting for him. He dropped it. So I was like, oh, I'll just bring it up and check my bait. Halfway up, I kind of stopped. And just kind of like, I don't know, it's a Hail Mary, see if he chased up. And he def he indeed chased it all the way up and grabbed it halfway up. And then I was able to hook him and well, actually not hook him. I think he just hitched like all the way in. All right, there you go. My blue ling, my regular colored ling. You can see the second one's a little bit bigger than the first one. All right, well, I'm going to bonk him and bleed him just like I did with the first one. And then I'm gonna finish my lunch and then I'll go in and check those crab pots. It's only 12.15 right now, so they've only been soaking for a few hours. I kinda wanna give it a little more time. So I'll just kinda hang out, eat my lunch, and then we'll go in and check them. Well, successful day so far. Got my two ling cod, what I came out here for. Now let's see if we can get a few crab. Now, honestly, crabbing is not that great right now. It's kinda the tail end of the season. Um, if you want to like get good crab numbers, you got to come out at the beginning of the season, but I'll be happy with like, if I get two or three keepers, actually, let's say if I get three keepers, I'll be happy. More is just bonus. Three keeper dungeness. That is more is just a bonus, but can't complain about the weather. I mean, look at this. No wind. There's a little bit of wind actually earlier in the morning, but it really calmed down. There's like nothing right now. Hardly any swell, maybe like one to two feet at the most. So, uh, yeah, beautiful weather, but anyways, we're making our way into the crab pots. I'm going to go up. I'm not in no rush, so I'm just going at like half speed right now. Finishing off my lunch. We'll see you on the crab pots. All right. Oh, first crab pot of the year. Well, yeah, first crab pot of the year, not the season. Let's see what this thing has in store for us. I'm hoping that with this low swell, the crabs are coming out to feed. Who knows if it's true or not, but that's what I'm telling myself. Ooh. Feels like, it's, I don't know, maybe, a, maybe I'm just out of shape, but Feels like it's got a little weight to it. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. So we got one, two, three, four, five dungies and two rock crab. We'll see a couple of these dungies are a little small and they're females, but there's at least, at least two keepers. Let's see, let's pop this thing open. Yeah, it's nice to have all this deck space now. It's a luxury I'm not really used to on the Outback. But because the motor is farther forward on this kayak, there's all this space about my feet here. All right. Well, we'll let's get the small ones out here first. This is a little female. I uh, shouldn't even have measured. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> it's been too long since I've crabbed. Forgot that these guys can pinch you. Gotta watch my feet too. One small female back she'll go another female that's too small that one's a male you can tell right there that part is pointed so it's borderline it's got all its legs so i'm hoping it's a keeper uh, best way to hold them in my opinion is like this with these two back legs here then they'll never pinch you 
Oh, I think there's a keeper. I think we got a keeper here. Oh, barely. It's barely a keeper, but it's a keeper. Five and three quarters. Minimum size here in uh, California. Let me just double check. Oh, it's not, it's not barely. That's a good five and seven eighths. All right, keeper number one. That's first keeper on uh, this kayak. There's a little rock crab. That's a female. Another female dungy, I'm pretty sure it's too small. Uh, we'll just throw it back. It's better to keep the males. I don't know if it really helps the population or not. They say it does, assuming it probably does. Um, but the males have more meat in each uh, segment or whatever. Here we go. This is the winter male right here. Do not. Look at that one. All the legs, big, hard legs. Oh yeah, that one's gonna be full of meat. I think this might be seven. Oh, just under seven. It's like six and seven eighths. That's a solid one right there. Second keeper. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. This will be the first. Look at that release. There we go. All right, not too bad. Two keepers. Like I was saying, if I could get three keepers, I'd call it a victory. I already got two in the first pot, so hopefully if uh, that holds, there should be... You know, we're on pace for six keepers right now. We'll see how it goes, but uh, we're anyways, we're two thirds of the way to victory. All right, pot number two. So uh, another thing here, in case you're not familiar, everyone has to have their Go ID number on their buoy. So that is a number that is given to you when you buy your fishing license. It's right at the top of your, your license. And uh, I'm not really sure the exact reason for it, but I know a couple of reasons. Well, one reason why you do that is if your buoy gets lost, someone can track you down and get bring it back to you. I think a second reason is so that um, if someone pull like if dfg pulls up on you and you're pulling someone's crab pulling up a crab pot you can tell them that it is indeed your crab pot yeah, this feels pretty heavy and uh, another reason is um, a lot of the buoys like these buoys they're just the amazon buoys that a lot of people get so um just because i have them doesn't mean that someone else might not have the same buoy so and same rope and i've seen it before so anyways, having that number on there can clarify it if you're ever not sure if it's your pot or not. All right, let's go. Let's get one more keeper. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh man, bonus. Look at that. Those are some big ones. Look at that. Two rock crab, no, three rock crab. And one, two, three, four dungeness, I think. All of these might be keepers actually. Hold up, dang. Wow, look at that. I was not expecting these numbers. Come on. Get out of there. Oh, do not pinch my foot. All right, let's start weeding through them. That is a nice rock crab right there. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty hard shell. I think I'm gonna keep this one. So rock crab in California you just need to be four inches. That's over six, so that's plenty big. Uh, we'll keep him. Let's start with the smaller ones here. Female rock crab, toss her back. Another female here, don't need her. And the rest are male, I think these are all male Dungeness. Dang, I think we got ourselves a, a bounty here. Yeah, keeper, six and a quarter. Pretty sure that's the smallest one. Yeah, six and a half. This one's hanging on to the rock crab. Another six and a half. And one last male up here. Running out of room. Oh, oh, do not pinch me. Yeah, another si over six and a half. Woo! So that's four dungy keepers in that one, plus a rock crab keeper that I'm gonna keep, plus the two dungies from my last spot. So now I'm up to 
six dungies and one rock. Way more, I already doubled what I wanted to get. Man, if this next one has four in it, that's a full limit. That would be sick. There's definitely some crab in here. Whether or not there's four, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Oh, that's why it feels so weird. It's coming up sideways. Oh yeah, at least at least two keepers. Well, I shouldn't say at least one keeper. So they're two kind of questionable. This is a male. Let's see about this one. Got to get the claws out of the way here. All right. Oh yeah, keeper. That's a keeper. This one might be a keeper. I think this one's even bigger. Keeper. All right, and the last one. Yeah, keeper. So I know I probably said this a thousand times on my channel already, but just really quickly, properly measure a crab from inside the last spine to the inside the last spine on the other side not the spines themselves um, and in California the minimum size is five and three quarters male or female um, but that is our ninth keeper all males and one rock crab keeper so I don't know probably me catching my uh, ling cod limit so quickly actually prevented me from getting my dungy limit but that's okay I'm Nine, nine keeper dungeons is a good day, especially when everyone was telling me that the crabbing is so slow out here. Yeah, man, it's a good day. It's like only like, I don't know, probably one o'clock now. Here, let's get the actual time. Exact time is 126. Got my limit of link cod, basically my limit of dungeons, basically a double limit before, uh, before two o'clock is pretty good, especially from a kayak. Well, that was fun. Got double limits, one lingcod limit and one Dungeness crab, essentially limit. I don't know if you want to, you don't have to count it if you don't want to, but I'm going to count it. Double limit, crabs, lingcod, and uh, phew, just amazing day out here. Good start to the season. So hopefully many more of these days to come. You know, lingcod season or rockfish season is just starting now. Today's the first day. Crab season goes for another couple of months, so um, I'll definitely be doing some more combo trips like this one before that ends, and then many more lingcod and rockfish trips after that. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I'll leave all the crab gear linked in the description. I know a lot of people asked that before. If you're interested, go ahead and check that out. You still got a couple months before crab season ends, and uh, you can get yourself crabs just like this one. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. And, wish I could hold all 10, but ba-boom. Not too bad for opening day. All right guys, check this out. Really quick, I'm cleaning my fish. I'm like putting the carcasses into the cages for next time. And look what I found in here, in the stomach of one of the lingcod. This is a cable baiter right here. And we use this for salmon. Um, and you can tell this person was, you know, definitely salmon fishing because they clipped the barb there. And you know what's crazy about this is it hasn't been salmon season since last, like, October. So this fish lived with this hook inside its stomach for over six months. And it survived. I don't know how. And look at it. It's got a big cable, big old hook. It was in that stomach the whole time. Anyways, thought that was interesting.